Hey guys, this is John. Alright, so this is the first video in a new series where I'm going to be presenting you with easily digestible and practical pieces of chess advice. I'm gearing this series towards players who are below 1800. I know there are many of you out there who are enthusiastic chess amateurs. You probably watch a lot of chess YouTube videos, you play online, you do tactics, you read books. But you probably also have glaring weaknesses in your game, and you're far from master still. So these videos are geared towards you. I have a similar series called Climbing the Rating Ladder, where I play lower-rated players and comment on the typical mistakes as I go. But in this series, I'm going to be drawing heavily on the practice of my students. So many of you may know that I'm a professional chess teacher. I've been teaching chess full-time for about five years. And as a result, I constantly see, week in and week out, excellent instructional examples from the games of my students. And with their permission, I'm going to share some of those examples with you. So in this first example, we have Constantine, my student, playing white. He's rated 1588 in standard on chess.com, or he was at the time this game was played. And he's facing an opponent who's 1541. This is a 30-minute game per side. And Constantine opened with e4. We're actually only going to look at the opening in this game. And I'm going to show you the introductory moves. Black replied with e5. Constantine played knight f3. His opponent played d6, the Philidor defense. Constantine played bishop c4. His opponent replied with knight c6. Constantine brought out his other knight, knight c3. Black played a6. Constantine played d4. And his opponent replied with h6. So this is the position I wanted to ask you about. So we're five moves into the game. It's white to move. How do you think white should play this? And if you'd like to pause your video and ponder that, you can do so now. So white to move, how should white proceed? Okay, so I intentionally avoided commenting on the first five moves because I didn't want to give you any cues. But you probably noticed that there's some tension going on between the pawn on d4 and the pawn on e5. And white has a choice about what to do about that tension. They could just leave it and play some move like castles or bishop e3, bring out a piece. But I think many players will, rightly so, be looking at either pushing the pawn to d5 or capturing on e5. So if you thought about both those moves, I think you're definitely thinking wrong, along the right lines. And unfortunately for Constantine, he chose the wrong path of those two. He played d5. And I'm going to show you why that's a mistake in a second. But first, let's look at the correct move, which is d takes e5. And this is correct for two reasons. Uh, one is a tactical reason. This move actually just wins a pawn. And two, it's more of a general reason. This move makes sense given the flow of the game. So the tactical reason is that after d takes e5, black has to recapture either with the knight or the pawn, otherwise they're just losing a pawn. So let's say pawn takes. Then white can play queen takes d8, check, swapping the queens. And no matter which way black takes, either with the king or the knight, they're going to be losing something. If king takes d8, then bishop takes f7. The pawn falls here. The black king was no longer protecting it. And if knight takes d8, then white can swipe the pawn on e5. Knight takes e5. White goes ahead, a clean pawn. So that nicely refutes d takes e5. The alternative is knight takes e5. And after knight takes e5, d takes e5, we have the same position, except a pair of knights have been swapped. And here white has two good ways to win a pawn. Uh, one is queen takes d8 check, king takes d8, and then bishop takes f7, just the same as before. But probably the better way is bishop takes f7 check which is a handy device. If you do tactics, you've probably seen this a million times, but black's king is uh, trying to be dragged away from the defense of the queen on d8. So if king takes f7, black would just lose the queen on d8. Therefore, black would have to play king e7 to try to avoid absolute disaster, but at the very least, white is up a pawn with a much better position. So d takes e5 would net white a pawn if black decided to recapture. So that's the tactical reason why d takes e5 is correct. But just getting into the general uh, reason why d takes e5 is the best move, 
when your opponent has been playing slowly in the opening and spending time on moves that they really shouldn't, you want to try to um, increase the tempo of the game. You want to try to speed things up and open lines so you can begin to attack them. And here, only five moves into the game, Black has already played four pawn moves. E5, D6, A6, and H6. And that should be a cue to White to open the position and try to capitalize on their development advantage because White's done a good job so far of mobilizing their minor pieces. Constantine has both knights and the light square bishop into the game. But without open lines, without avenues for those pieces to come into the play, and possibly other pieces like the queen or even the dark square bishop, that's not going to mean anything. That lead and development is not going to amount to a single thing. So D takes E5 is just correct in a general sense because you want to play to open avenues for your pieces when your opponent is behind in development. So going back to that move that Constantine played, D5, this does win a tempo. It is attacking the knight with a gain of time. But everything else about this move is bad. You can see that we block the light square bishop, and also we close down the position. So after this knight moves, let's say it even goes to e7. In the game, black actually played knight a5, which kind of strands the knight on the side of the board. I would not recommend that. So let's say knight e7 or even knight b8. Uh, even though white has more space and better development, white just can't demonstrate it. Uh, there's not enough open lines. There's no open files. Nothing has been exchanged. It's a locked position. And in a locked position, a uh, lead in development doesn't mean as much. And the opponent may have a chance to catch up, and it could be as if white never had a lead in development to begin with. You know, let's say white just castles, black starts bringing pieces out. Uh, white's just going to be shuffling their pieces behind their uh, pawns, especially these pawns in the center, until they find a good pawn breakthrough, another way to open up the game, because that's the primary way that you uh, create chances and open a position is via pawn exchanges, pawn breaks. And d5 just makes that much harder to do because white is voluntarily closing the position. So uh, to Constantine's credit, he recognized why d5 was a mistake when we went over this game in the lesson. And it also shows you, even though Constantine has a good rating, 1588 in standard, that uh, players who are a bit higher rated still make mistakes like that. And it's nothing to be ashamed of at all. So d takes e5 would have been the best move here, winning a pawn for white and opening lines, whereas d5 unnecessarily closes the position. So if you have a lead in development, and especially if your opponent is playing kind of unnecessary pawn moves in the opening, you know, a lot of people play h6 and a6 because they've been burned by their opponent's minor pieces coming to squares on the fifth rank. But if you watch my videos, you probably know that you have to play these moves very sparingly because they often just amount to uh, a waste of time. So if you see your opponent making moves like that, you should instantly cue yourself into thinking, how do I open lines? How do I make a pawn break? And ideally, eliminate and capture some of my opponent's pawns so I can open lines and, and show the muscle of my pieces. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll be back again soon with more examples from the play of my students. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.